and welcome to the Golf News podcast series, No Plan Go. Protect yourself from viral respiratory infections in association with Pfizer. I'm Lachlan Kitchen, your host for this podcast series, and today we'll be discussing the cardiovascular complications of viral respiratory infections. At present, heart disease is a global health concern. The World Health Organization states that cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of death globally, taking an estimated 17.9 million lives each year, and they have an impact on the severity and outcome of viral respiratory infections. In this podcast episode, we will investigate the relationship between cardiovascular health and the susceptibility to develop severe viral respiratory infections. We delve into the risk factors that link heart disease to viral infections, and we'll find out how both preventative and proactive steps can help reduce these risks. Joining me today in conversation is Dr. Salwa Alkoli. Dr. Alkoli is a leading specialist cardiologist with 20 years of experience in non-invasive cardiology and clinical cardiology. She works across all aspects of cardiology, but has special interests in coronary, valvular, and rheumatic heart diseases, hyperlipidemia, heart failure, and cardiac arrhythmias. Dr. Alcoli graduated from Cairo University with a master's in cardiology and received a postgraduate diploma in cardiology from Middlesex University in London and served as a specialist in cardiology at various hospitals in Dubai. Doctor, thanks for your time and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. What is heart disease and its various forms? Uh, when we talk about heart disease, we mean uh, uh, all the diseases that are related to the heart and the blood vessels which are attached to the heart. The heart itself is a muscle, so it's a wide spectrum of disease that can include any part of the heart, whether it's the muscle, we can get a disease of the muscle, that uh, all the types of cardiomyopathies or myocarditis or uh, even the uh, outer layer of the uh, heart, which can uh, we which can cause uh, pericarditis or the, the lining of the heart muscle that can cause endocarditis, and we have also the valves inside the hearts which can con, uh, which can uh, get narrowed or even uh, leaky, and this can cause a lot of uh, uh, complications in the heart, and we also have uh, the coronary arteries attached to the heart, which supplies the heart for, with oxygen and blood. These arteries can get uh, blocked or diseased that can, and can cause coronary artery disease uh, and can cause a heart attack as well. And we have also the electrical system of the heart when it can get diseased and can cause all kind of arrhythmias, starting from a palpitation and simple uh, heart rhythm disturbance to uh, uh, serious uh, events and uh, also include cardiac arrest as well. And heart disease can also affect uh, other parts of the body, such as the brain, through conditions like having a stroke. Yeah, of course, stroke it can happen due to a heart condition that can be the cause of this uh, event. And uh, the blood vessels that are attached to the heart can also get diseased. We have the uh, disease that's called atherosclerosis, when the cholesterol uh, deposits on the wall of the arteries and can cause narrowing or uh, any uh, uh, blocking of the arteries, uh, which leads to uh, many other diseases uh, all over the body. So when it comes to heart disease, uh, what are the known common risk factors that are associated with it? We divide these risk factors to uh, two main types. We have the modifiable risk factors, which we have no control over it, like the age, the sex, and uh, um, the family history as well. And we all we have the non modifiable the modifiable risk factors, which are uh, which we have control if we follow certain guidelines and certain lifestyle. We can control them. If uh, these, for example, the diabetes which is uh, high blood sugar or high uh, cholesterol or high blood pressure and also uh, the lifestyle itself increasing the exercise and uh, smoking uh, cessation all these factors can be modified to control the heart disease. So some of those common risk factors, some can be controlled and unfortunately some can't. It's, it's yeah, like genetics. But we need to be aware of them because... Uh, if, if someone is aware of a disease, he can prevent it from happening. They can seek advice and be more 
uh, have more precautions uh, against this disease. So, Doctor, how does then someone who has heart disease, are they more vulnerable for a severe viral respiratory infection? And is there perhaps one form of heart disease that makes you more vulnerable than another? Uh, of course, uh, respiratory heart, uh, disease, viral disease, can affect the heart in many ways, either directly or indirectly. Uh, the direct effect of the heart is is it is uh, rare, but it can happen that few cells of the heart can get inflamed and cause myocarditis through the indirect effect, through inflammation and re- immune reaction, they can also cause uh, some disease of the heart muscle itself. And there is uh, uh, also uh, other forms of disease that can happen like uh, pericarditis or endocarditis, the outer layer of the or the inner layer of the heart muscle itself can get inflamed as well. Yeah, so the complications can be quite severe for Yeah, for it's someone. quite severe and it's a big uh, range of disease that uh, also uh, if it ca- if the viral disease uh, can uh, induce a hypercoagulability state that can cause even coronary artery disease or blockage of any arteries or even stroke or and so on. Yeah, and yeah. They're, they're obviously a, a big concern. So uh, for someone who does have heart disease and they start to develop some common flu-like symptoms. They wake up and they've got a bit of a sore throat, a cough and maybe a fever. Because they have heart disease, are they then at risk of developing severe complications of a viral respiratory infection? Of course, uh, they are at risk. Uh, people who has already heart disease that were found to have uh, uh, more hospitalization or uh, complications of COVID than uh, in in terms of the heart disease than the others who are not um, having the same disease. And um, regarding the precautions and what what uh, they should do if they have uh, find the, these symptoms and they already know that they have heart disease, they should. Uh, follow uh, certain steps to uh, try to prevent and try to be aware of their condition of the heart uh, before they have more complications. So, Doctor, given we know how susceptible people with heart disease are to severe viral respiratory infections, at the moment they start getting those flu-like symptoms, what's your advice on those first steps they should take? Uh, yes, uh, people with uh, heart disease are more vulnerable and more susceptible to get complications and hospitalizations that we want to prevent this from happening. So I um, I advise that the first step that it, they should take when they have uh, flu-like symptoms or uh, fever or any symptom like shortness of breath or something, they should have access to their medical provider and they should get tested and uh, know exactly what type of virus or is it viral or bacterial or uh, whatever and they so they can get the proper uh, medicine that uh, we have nowadays a lot of options for medications whether uh, antiviral or uh, antibacterial or something so uh, the aim is to prevent complications of this and worsening of this uh, their disease so doctor it is simple as soon as you get those that onset of flu-like symptoms. See your healthcare provider, and if you get tested, you can work out the origin of your viral respiratory infection. Yeah, exactly. The aim is to uh, prevent complications from happening for those patients. Doctor, we're big on prevention in this series. We're often talking about preventative measures. What are some of the steps that one can take in their daily life if they have heart disease to help minimize the risk of a severe viral respiratory infection? People can follow the guidelines of the public uh, advice, uh, public health advice to uh, minimize their risk of getting the disease. Uh, Of course, distancing or avoiding crowded setting and uh, washing or keep their hands clean most of the time and um, wearing mask of course uh, the all these simple measures can pre- can prevent them from getting the infection and be very effective so outside day-to-day life what are some of the other preventative measures that someone with heart disease could take, such as flu vaccines, for example? Yeah, flu vaccines are recommended especially for the high-risk group, 
if someone is having a heart disease and it also uh, depends on the severity of the disease and what exactly is his uh, condition and uh, the age of course can play a factor and uh, they are advised to take the vaccine of course as a preventive measures of uh, viral infection. Uh, when it comes down to heart disease and its relationship with severe viral respiratory infections. As a healthcare provider yourself, doctor, what do you see as your responsibility when it comes down to guiding and advising and informing a patient about many of the risk factors involved? Uh, my advice for every patient is, and for every individual also as well, uh, the, we have the famous advice that uh, uh, has become very popular to know your numbers, know what your blood pressure is, know what your blood sugar is, know what your cholesterol level is. And uh, in this way, uh, and your BMI also as well, this way we can, uh, he can know uh, his risk of getting heart disease. And for the diseased patients, they have to uh, also, uh, they have to be uh, uh, in contact with their healthcare provider, and uh, whenever they getting any unusual symptoms like shortness of breath or unusual change of their uh, uh, their uh, capacity of uh, exercise or anything, they should uh, be following up their condition to know exactly uh, where it is. And the very important steps to take, uh, knowing your numbers is a good line to be able to know what is your, your blood sugar and your blood pressure and your BMI. Yeah. When it comes down to a patient then, how can they raise awareness amongst their own family and friends and their support network about the relationship between heart disease and severe viral respiratory infections and the complications? Does it again come down to perhaps knowing those numbers and informing their family and friends about the importance of being aware of, of those numbers? Yeah, importance of being aware of these, of these numbers that uh, they can uh, know uh, early to prevent the complications or getting uh, advanced heart disease. And in terms of the viral infection, of the uh, the heart, actually, it's uh, it's uh, a not a very uh, common complications for the viral infection. It happens in few number of uh, patients, but the patients with the heart disease, we see it a lot. Uh, if they can, they can get hospitalized or uh, having more complications than normal. So these people has to be. Uh, to prevent themselves from uh, getting this disease and protect themselves uh, well. Dr. Salwa El-Khali, thank you very much for coming in to share your time and your expertise with us today to speak about the relationship between cardiovascular complications and severe viral respiratory infections. Thank you very much and thanks for Gulf News and Pfizer for having me here. If you would like more information on this topic, and want to find out more about the series, please visit the website www.golfnews.com forward slash no dash plan dash go. I'm Lachlan Kitchen. Thank you for your time and I look forward to your company on the next episode of the Golf News podcast series, No Plan Go. Protect yourself from respiratory infections in association with Pfizer. Pfizer.